Welcome everybody, this is Niklas Hoschmey and today we're looking at round number 5 from the FIDE Grand Swiss tournament being held in Isle of Man right now. It's a rest day and I'm taking my time here to show you some games, some interesting games against some of the best players in the world and in round 5 I played against the Spanish number 1 Francisco Vallejo Pons and I have good memories because back in 2010 I beat Vallejo with black and to this date he is actually still the strongest player I've ever beaten. If you've seen my last videos you you probably see it, saw that I had a chance already to beat somebody stronger but couldn't capitalize on it. So I played against him with the black pieces and I played the Petrov for the first time in my life because I said well let's surprise him and also in this tournament he had not really showed something great in, against the Petrov. In round number one he played bishop d3 which is not particularly critical. Also not critical is queen e2 but he probably want to get me out of my preparation and just play a game and I didn't mind because this is very close to equal or maybe just equal. g6 is a good move that Karana played twice against So and Carlsen to develop the bishop to g7. Bishop g5, bishop g7 castle. Here I played a6 just to take any knight b5 ideas out of the position. Maybe not necessary but also nothing wrong with it. d4, h6. And it's interesting in the course of a few moves now white's position becomes very difficult and it's, it's kind of difficult to pinpoint where it goes wrong. Maybe white should take on f6 here but this is not a move you want to play because you just give up the bishop. On the other hand my piece are a little bit awkward but I wouldn't be unhappy about this. So bishop h4 now b5 I quite like this move to develop my bishop to the long diagonal and get control over the light squares in the center and knight d2 is probably a mistake for sure yeah here white should play bishop takes f6 which doesn't make much sense if you just retreated the bishop but it already tells you position is tricky you know, with this Petrov, people often think, oh, it's, it's so boring, it's so, um, so equal. But the positions, they look innocent, but sometimes they're not. And this one is definitely not innocent. As you will see, in a few moves, white gets into a lost position here. Maybe white should just retreat, but also then I think black is already better. Bishop f3, and now b4. That was quite an important move, and I took some time to find this move before I play g5. The point is if white takes on a8 I can take on c3 hitting the knight on d2 and I get two pieces for the rook and the knight doesn't have a good square he has to go to a4 b1 because of knight e4 for example I take on e4 bishop takes and now I win a piece d5 bishop takes d5 c6 both bishops are attacked and I win material so you could also go to a4 but also here the knight looks out of place out of play and black is is better here this would be one possible continuation black enjoys space advantage pressure on the center looks very comfortable so knight cb1 rook a7 bishop g3 and another important move h5 and here in the analysis my opponent said here he realized he's in trouble. The point of h5 is not only well to trap the bishop which is the obvious threat but to get this diagonal for my bishop myself. So if h3 which my opponent didn't play then bishop h6 is quite annoying. White cannot untangle his knights. If knight e4 there's g4 check knight bd2. Now this one is also hanging but here knight e8 is very strong. The point is that in this variation <laughs> suddenly the knight is without squares on e4 and black should be much better. So h4, g4, bishop e2, knight c6 hitting the pawn on d4 and white is in so much trouble already. Bishop f5 and so easy to play so here I felt really really good about my position obviously. Bishop f5 I have the bishops on the diagonal so white plays bishop f4 to at least stop that one. b takes c3, 
And I thought white has to take with the knight here and just give up this pawn and try to defend somehow, but obviously black has excellent winning chances as well. Pawn takes c3 here, I thought, okay, this must be just game over. Just look at this position, I have all my pieces in the game, white is on the back ranks, but not that simple. Knight d5 is already in, in accuracy. I should just play rook b8. And here the game could be over in a few moves, maybe. Um, I was concerned about knight b3 and then that white can play bishop d2. But if I had just looked a little bit longer here, for example, I would have easily found knight a5 and the white position is collapsing. So bishop c4 is another move, but knight a5, just everything is coming. The rook... The rooks are doubling. I, I like how everything works out. Now suddenly the rook on a7 makes sense as well. I can immediately double on the b file. This is... White will not withstand this attack. So knight d5 I played. Bishop e3. And my original intention was to go rook b8. The point is if white goes knight b3, then I can take on b1 and just win material. But then I noticed this move bishop c4. And... White is still fighting on. Also this is possible for sure. But I played knight a5 instead to stop this bishop c4 idea. King b2. And here I played knight b6. And pretty much I was cashing in, which is fine. But again, just to, to keep the pressure would have been so much stronger. Knight b3, rook a b7, knight d2. This is what I saw and I thought, okay, white is holding somehow, yeah? But again, I have all the, my pieces in the, on the right squares. I play c5, try to open up the position, bishop e6. Sooner or later, something will fall for sure. But as we are, we like to have something in our hands. And so I decided to, to win a pawn. Which is also fine, but the position is not as winning anymore as it used to be. So knight b6. There are also some knight a4 ideas. So knight b3. Knight c4 check, king a1, knight takes b3, pawn takes. So now we have a lot of trades and in the end I have this move, bishop c2. And this is the position I saw. I'm a pawn up, I have the two bishops. I knew my position is very good. So I just went for this. Rook f1. Some ideas here, maybe rook f5, rook h, rook takes h5. So I played bishop e6, rook b2. And now I start to lose the threat. I played rook a8 to, to trade, to fight for the b-file, to get my rook into a game. But I should just play bishop h6 and open up the position, which in general is what you want to do if you have the two bishops, you want to open up the position. So this would have been a good way and black should be winning in the long run. So rook a8 is a first misstep, but now there's a second misstep, rook fb8, following up with the plan. Again, bishop h6, e4 now, again f5 or maybe a5, something along these lines, and black keeps a big advantage. So knight d2, rook fb8, knight e4, and I had completely missed this idea, very creative, nice idea, knight e4, knight g3, and going after this pawn. And this is actually difficult to deal with. So I took on b2, and now I made another mistake, and then my advantage is gone, rook e8 trying to go after this pawn. Rook b8 is better, king c2, and now push the a, a pawn. This would have been the way to go. Knight g3, a4, now a3 is quite a strong threat. So white should maybe play rook b1, and then bishop b3 check. Here I definitely keep some advantage, even though, okay, the position for white has also improved quite a lot. Rook e8, now we're both pretty low on time. My opponent played knight g3, bishop c8. Knight g3, he offered a draw. And the position is equal, but of course I want to keep trying. Bishop c8, I actually missed my opponent's reply, bishop c4. And I have to go back because this pawn on f7 needs protection. So bishop e6, my opponent repeated. Bishop d5. Now the problem is, and this is why I want, want to put my bishop on c8, that this pawn is hanging. Bishop takes g4 and white has regained the pawn and it's equal. I cannot take on g2 because rook g1, bishop e4 and bishop d1 picks up material along the g file. 
h5 and white wins. So I spotted this, fortunately, um, in time. Played bishop h8, knight f4, bishop c4. Now we have made move 40. I still have the two bishops, but the position is not open enough. My bishops cannot really get active, and this is, this is equal. Rook e1, c5. I'm trying to open up the position for my bishop. Takes, takes, and white does what you should do when you are defending against two bishops. Split the bishop pair, trade one of the bishops. Bishop b5. Now white doesn't want to take on b5 because it improves my structure. So bishop h5, rook e5, and white has a number of moves here, rook d2, bishop f3. My opponent played g4. This made his life a little bit more difficult, but it's still, it's still fine. Bishop c4. My opponent's intention was to go g5 here and then rook e3, rook f3, but unfortunately for me he noticed in time that bishop takes c3 as a check and wins a pawn. So he got himself together and found some, some more or less, well not only moves, but some important moves to keep the balance and knight d5. And again offering a trade of my, one of my bishops against the knight and then we reach an endgame of opposite colored bishops so I played rook f3 and rook d7 and now I have to take and I win this pawn but this is just not enough rook f5 the bishop endgame is a very simple draw because white can can block these pawns easily with his bishop and king so I played rook c3 check, f6, and if the white pawn wasn't there, black would have pretty good winning chance, but with the pawn, there's, there's not much to do. Here, by the way, <laughs> I was thinking about rook h2 check. That would have been really unfortunate because white plays rook f2 check and I can resign. Fortunately, I, I spotted this in time, moved my king out of the diagonal here, g6, rook h2 check, king d1, rook g2, getting behind the pawn, rook f7, rook a7, bishop c3, and last precise move here, g7. And I took on g7, offered the draw. If I take with the bishop, white takes on a5, there's no reason to continue playing here, no, absolutely no chances. And rook takes g7, I offer the draw because of the rook takes g7, white just blocks these two pawns easily for example this could be a typical typical setup here like this and the bishop just stays on this diagonal and black can do whatever he wants pretty much there's no way to make progress i guess the only try would be to bring the king around here but then white just steps back one move king c2 and absolutely nothing black can do so I offer the draw here. About this game I was a bit upset because you saw the position earlier. I was it was looking so overwhelming. And I settled for this pawn win, which also was great, but then in time trouble I lost the threat and my opponent escaped. Very unfortunate, because you don't get a chance to, to win against these players so often, especially with the black pieces, with the Petrov. But it wasn't as innocent as it looked and I had a great, great chance there. But unfortunately, I did not use it. All right, let me know if you have any questions about this game. And then I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye bye.